ching to ching doing the math, <laughs> I just realized you're coming up on an enormous mile marker, which is your 45th anniversary. Oh, is really? Is <laughs> ah! Ah! I enjoyed the arts. I was an artist, and ever since I was, you know, a young girl, you know, I think it was just sort of in the blood. Did a lot of painting and drawing without any experience other than, you know, what I got in high school. One of my former teachers sort of introduced me to who Salvador Dali was, and so I really got interested in his work because it was so full of ideas and it was, you know, during that time it was sort of hallucinogenic, let's put it that way. And uh, so I was intrigued. I like surrealism, I like the idea of the dream, and um, some of my work was kind of very similar in a way, even before I was doing stuff like that before I even was going to introduce to Dolly. I decided that probably at some point I was just going to teach people how to talk about Dolly's dreams, so that's what I did. I started with the museum in 1971. I was extremely lucky the day I walked into the museum and they had posted a position it was a part-time position to, to work at the museum in Cleveland, you know, to help Laura. And then I continued with it, even she went off and got married and I stayed on. You know, it all started out as, you know, Mr. Morse's experiment, you know, with taking the paintings out of the house and putting them in the other half of his office building because there was too many people coming to his house. So he put it in his office building, really not knowing and that more had to do with Dolly than anything else, was whether or not people would come and see Dolly. People had to call to make an appointment to come to the museum, and I would take reservations and also manage the little store we had there, and then change my hat and go out and give tours and also change exhibitions out from Mr. Morris's personal collection. They had drawings and watercolors. They had also many, many of Dolly's prints. So we would do thematic shows and people slowly started to come and it was really mostly by word of mouth. We did exhibitions and, and doing talks in the gallery. And my knowledge at the time was for not being educated like they, am, they were, but you know, finding my way. Just from what I read and learned from the Morrises. I mean, there was no formal class. Nobody taught me right. about Dolly. I had to learn it all myself that, from the books. And there that, were really books, not right. that many books. Mr. Morris you know, did a book called Dolly the Panorama. And that's where he took each painting and discussed it. But he looked at it through Dolly's eyes and utilized the landscape to interpret a lot of the works. So the Morrises collected this work. We were in Cleveland for almost 10 years, and then we moved to the St. Petersburg, uh, brought together by the fact that he wanted to find a permanent home for the collection, and it was important that it stay together. Since we were supported by the, the Morrises and being in their building, it was a different ball game at that time. So once we moved to uh, St. Petersburg, we had to think of the museum as a community asset. As when we first moved down here, we moved into what well, was an existing warehouse that had been sort of gutted and part of it was finished off. So we moved into what was the gallery. We put the word out to, to have docents, we wanted docents to come in and to, to give tours. And so uh, we did our training, but at the time that we started the training is that half the bu building was built at the time. And all the paintings were in, in boxes <laughs> at the time. So it was like, so these people came in and I said, well, I don't have, I have some slides, and I have some postcards, I have some pictures and books. So we're gonna try to do it that way. And uh, so a lot of them hadn't seen any of the paintings before they gave their tour. March 1982, we opened to the public, and uh, that's when the first time that we had paintings on the wall. Through the research that Mr. Morris did and the original training that we conducted, and it was like a four and a half month training period, I had to interview you to make sure you're the right 
person <laughs> for the job. And most of the people coming in had come from other careers, you know, from nurses to teachers to, to housewives and, and people that worked in other trades. But they had this interest in learning about art. And, and Dolly is an art history lesson in itself. So we did this training for four and a half months, and then they had to be tested. And, and then we had to make them commit to a year of giving presentations in the gallery. And many of them hadn't done anything like that. But by testing them and having them study the information, and then we wanted them to put together a tour themselves. We weren't going to give them, here, read this, you know, and say, we, didn't want to, we wanted them to interpret it through their eyes and their experiences. And also, you know, the Morrises would come in and they would talk with them and they had them there to ask questions. We put together a nice little library for them to borrow books out of, you know, on other artists and other things that were brought up in the class. And that's how we started out. And the docents have been so important because they've, they're ambassadors. They spread the word about Dolly and people love to be able to talk to them, to ask them questions. And many of them then go on to just eat up stuff about this. And they, and they really never thought they'd be talking about an artist in a museum. So wonderful people have come here through here to, to spread the word about Dolly, and we can't be more appreciative about that. I'd have to say that I didn't know anything about running a museum, really. Uh, you know, we ran the gallery in Cleveland a particular way. You know, we did changing exhibitions, but we didn't have to, uh, since we were supported by the the Morrises and being in their building, it was a different ball game. You know, I self-educated and also read and continued my education and received my master's eventually. And, uh, but it was mostly just by being aware of what was happening in, in the museum world, which has changed considerably since, you know, the 1980s that, you know, there were important things that I, I, I saw that we needed to do. There, Mr. and Mrs. Morris did not put this collection together because they wanted it sold off. They loved this collection and they painstakingly put this together as they did in such a way, picking some of the very, very fine works that other people were not, you know, looking over at the time and, and putting them in this collection. We have some works that every time we do an exhibition, they're asked for. So Mr. Morris had certain rules that he, he was concerned about being maintained, and I understood that. And it was important that, you know, I was kind of like the keeper of the collection to make sure that the, the wishes of the collector were maintained. A lot of that commitment goes back to a promise or a commitment or the loyalty of me um, regarding me to the Morrises, you know, because we needed to make sure everything was preserved. And so some of the first things that I started to do was scrapbooks and photos and things like that were in acid-free holders. And I knew that I needed to get those rebacked, and you know, we took a lot of the prints and things out of old frames, because they were framed like in the 1970s, and now it's in the 80s, and, and that stuff was starting to deteriorate, and so we needed to, and you know, new things were coming into vogue where you know they had acid-free backings and acid-free mats. Had to change everything out. One thing, because Mr. Morse didn't loan a lot, the paintings were in pretty pristine condition. You know, they didn't travel a lot. They were in a certain environment and it was very controlled. And even when it was assessed, when it was given, the gentleman at the auction house that appraised it, you know, was in, very impressed by the condition of the collection and how well it was kept. This past week we worked on Gallicid, Dallicid, Deoxy, nucleic acid, and also the hallucinogenic torador. What you see behind me is being put back in place. Uh, it's the final uh, completion of this project where uh, several different techniques had to take place in cleaning these works that had been on display 
for over 30 years uh, since their last cleaning, which was done before it even, they even moved here to St. Petersburg, Florida. So that was something important to maintain. I knew that conservation was an important issue for especially works on paper. You don't want these things to deteriorate. First, we were going to apply for it, and Mr. Morse really didn't like the idea, so we put our initial feelers out for it, and they thought we should f file on a classification of art gallery instead of art museum. But, you know, the fact that Mr. Morse didn't want to lend, I knew that that was detrimental to being able to l l borrow, you know, that, you know, that would never be accepted by the, you know, uh, AAM. We had to kind of break down some of those old ideas to make us more uh, accessible. We went through a course before we t did accreditation called MAP, Museum Assessment Program, and get the board to agree to buy computers and to buy uh, some sort of software program so that we could, you know, do this. And it was not easy to convince these people to do this. I made it my business to find out, well, well what do we need to do to get to the point where we are a museum that can get accredited. The Japanese collection uh, exhibition was shown in 1999, and that was a, a major milestone for us. Luckily, our director at the time, Marshall Rousseau, was important in the negotiations. This was the first time, you know, we had been asked to do something that far away, so it was quite, you know, a little concern and they also the the other there was another venue to that so once it left Tokyo it was going to Fukuoka so the selection was made we had to contribute to the interpretations of these paintings which I did in in this volume and so you had to we had to kind of write about them and then they translated into Japanese so <laughs> so it was like well, I don't know what they said in here, and hopefully they got it right, and I don't know if they changed any of the context, but uh, it, it seemed to go pretty well, and they were so wonderful with the paintings, even though we had to take them up an elevator, open-air elevator, and they carried them with these cloths on one end and on the other end so that they didn't use carts, they used cloths. And I was like, oh my God, we're going for it was so well received um, and they just got a huge attendance. And it was successful. The paintings came back in good shape and um, we were very happy to participate and be actually the first one to show in, in Japan. The library was kind of you know, the thought about element, I think, here. And I was always pushing for it because I knew there was so much material in there. And I really didn't, I didn't have the librarian experience, you know, library background to, to put it in any kind of, you know, the proper order so that people can see. In fact, for years, we had the library in the order that Mr. Morris liked to have it in, which had to do with how he would do research. So it was more grouped didn't follow, you know, the Library of Congress order. So the first thing we did when we had a librarian is we flipped everything around and it wasn't up till maybe like three years ago that we actually put the library in order so that anybody can find a book. And it is now on uh, Library World and OCLC, which is another database. That, uh, the one that we are on now called MIMSI, you know, records all the information about the painting, where it's been, how much we paid for it, who were the previous owners. That way it's inventoried. And it also adds to the exposure of the museum because when people go online to look for something they're doing research on, ah, it's at the Dali Museum, and not just another library with a book. 
now that the Morrisons are gone and one day I'll be gone. And I'm the only one that's been here for over 40 years and know why that's in that library. And I think it's important, it's part of what legacy is about, is that it's important that who comes next knows why it's here. It has a specific reason for being here. And, and Mr. Morris has little handwritten index notes and index cards, and now it's being computerized. We're having the journal read by uh, a, a software program that puts it into Word. Prior to that, it was typewritten pages by Reynolds. And plus we have also all his handwritten notes that he did with traveling. He would use little spiral bound notebooks to write all these wonderful stories about Dolly and, his, and, and their exploits together. That's one of my projects. I'm supposed to turn that into something such as a publication in the future. There's so many things that as the deputy director and as the chief curator I have to be involved with. More than just being engaged by the artist, which I do enjoy his work immensely and I find new things in paintings or new paintings appear that I've never seen before and you know it amazes me that he did so much work. Um, but it also was the challenge of what needed to be done to keep this collection together to preserve it. And so, you know, it's like ha being in a, uh, a job that was different every day. There was always different people you would meet, new things that had to be uh, interpreted. So, you know, you can ask for a better position to be in is to have those challenges and the challenge of making this museum into a world-class institution was also, I suppose, in the back of my mind, a hopeful event. But, you know, years ago when we were in a small half of Mr. Morris's office building, never would I have thought that we would be here today. Hi, my name is Joan Croft and I'm the curator of the Salvador Dali Museum in St. Petersburg, Florida. And when I'm not explaining these paintings to our visitors, I'm watching the Today Show. And I know what a difference today makes. <laughs>